842, welcome back on the BT Couch. Hey, this is a treat. Charles, the ninth Earl Spencer, joining us right now. Lord Spencer, welcome to BT. Well, it's a thrill to be here. Thank you very much. You're bringing the the opulence, the rich history behind uh, Althorpe, and we were just joking during the break. This uh, historic estate uh, stands on its own, but when it compares to a popular franchise out there that I know you love, Joe. <laughs> I love the Downton Abbey, and I just said, look at Althorpe. It's gorgeous, and you have a well, story that no, relates to Downton Abbey-ish. I, I, there was a program done on the house a couple of years ago, and in the LA Times, they did a review and they said that Althorpe makes Downton Abbey look Downton Shabby. Oh, my God, that's tourism. <laughs> no, but I sent that to, because Julian Fellows, who writes Downton Abbey, is a friend of mine. I sent that to him and uh, he was less than thrilled. He was the first person I've ever met who said, yes, and a friend of mine who writes Downton Abbey. That's just <laughs> I love that. how it goes. And now uh, let's talk about the rich history of the estate. And this is really unique because two months out of the year, there are people that can come visit and, and see the estate. Take us through five centuries and what makes this such a special, special property. Well, for me, emotionally, the fact that I'm the 18th generation to live there. You know, my, my family built this house in 1508, and it's been our headquarters really ever since. And I remember when I inherited, I was 27 and wandering around the real furniture that's there and the rooms and looking at these portraits, looking down on you. You feel, hmm, am I worthy of looking after this place? So I just really tried to do my best looking after it in the 21st century. Um, to many people, these houses are a sort of uh, relic from a past age, but actually, it's still a very much a family home. It's stunning. At 27, I can only imagine the <laughs> feeling of responsibility that you speak of. What is so interesting and fantastic about why you're here in Vancouver and tonight will be in Victoria yes. is you're actually taking some of the, those beautiful pieces within your family home and creating them with Jordan's furniture. Tell us about that. Yes, so it's something I've been doing for the last 12 years is um, putting together a collection. It's called Althorpe Living History. And over time, we've actually had 650 pieces from the collection reproduced by hand. And I like to see it as a sort of uh, a, a holistic approach, really, because for hundreds of years, the house has looked after the furniture. And now all the revenue that comes out of the furniture gets plowed back into the house. Reproduced by hand, you yes. say. we got to look at some of this furniture. Very intricate designs. Is there a favorite that kind of stands out, one, furniture-wise, and two, when you look at the rooms growing up in such a massive estate of well, these, where you like to be? Yes, these are actually, although these are intricate, these are really beautiful, and they're hand-carved, as I say. These are hall chairs. And because we have a climate very similar to yours here, um, when people arrived in the olden days on horseback, they'd, they'd be wet or muddy. And if they're waiting in your hall, you couldn't have upholstered chairs. So these, these were sort of made with that in mind. They had to be grand as a welcome to important visitors, but they couldn't get muddy and wet. Wow, that is spectacular. This is something you could imagine in any beautiful home anywhere on it, somebody who's feeling fashionable, where was this particular piece? Well, these were made by my family for our house. Um, and they, do you know, the, the, the only difference between this and the originals is these are much more comfortable. Um, <laughs> in the 18th century, people wanted just the style. But in this Althorpe collection, you know, we've tried to make it really usable for modern people. And it is, it's, you can see it's very sumptuous. But I like the elegance of the lines, you know. This is a very traditional um, look but it, it's it's still got relevance today and that's a piece that you can put you can get that one piece and build around it if you want to have one gorgeous piece of furniture I think we have a couple more to take a look at tell us the story behind this chair well these are particularly the gilded one on the right these were used by ladies during balls you know ballroom chairs for them to sit out uh, with their huge dresses on hooped dresses or whatever uh, th these were the little chairs they perched on and uh, they're just very decorative and lovely now we've made them slightly bigger now because we're all bigger but they are they're just beautiful decorative pieces and I like what you say you know I, I do think although a lot of people's tastes this day uh, these days are, are much more modern or contemporary you can still throw in these things I mean I like to think you know over the generations my family have lived there. These are the pieces they've stuck with generation after generation because they are classics really. They're truly beautiful and as you see handcrafted so that makes it extra special as well. Yes. And I, th I think we have a shot of the chest uh, to take a look at uh, the coloring and design right here. So let's bring up this last one. Tell us oh, what this well, is. Oh, it's so gorgeous. I mean, it, this, you know, the, it's it's a French design originally, and it's uh, it's in one of the more masculine rooms in the house. Um, and I just love it. You know, the inlay is so perfect. And, and it is amazing. You can find craftsmen to hand make these these days. It really is. And do you know, it's a thrill for me. I go around all these countries, uh, particularly in North America, Canada, and, and United States, and 
and see this furniture and it's being taken to new homes and it's really a, a great sort of vote of confidence in the taste of the people who've gone before me that these things still are, are, are popular. Add so much substance and heritage. How do you choose the pieces to be reproduced? Well, when the designers came around, there's a company who makes it, they're called Theodore Alexander, and they're, they're very respected in the furniture world. Their boss came around, a wonderful man, Englishman, and he and his designer said, could they have a look around the house? I said, of course. I'd sort of forgotten they were in the house. They reappeared three days later with 10,000 images of designs they wanted to work with. And we just go through it. So my, my role is really, I, I just veto anything, but I haven't had to, you know. Uh, but that's my role. If there was something I didn't like, it, it may not happen. But, I mean, I love the design, so I'm, I'm happy to share all of them, really. Designer, former correspondent, news correspondent <laughs> for the Today Show, so you've worked The Morning Grit, and yes. author, of course. Tell us about uh, Killers of the King and uh, the message you wanted to get across with that history. Well, thank you. Yes, this is my latest book, which um, was lucky enough to, to catch a wave in England. Um, and actually, I was just, I've just got the movie rights uh, two days ago, so it's, it's fun. But it's a true story. I love finding bits of history that are really obscure and bring them back to life. And this is the true story. We had a civil war in the 1640s, which ended with our king, Charles I, having his head chopped off. And um, it's the revenge story, a true revenge story, of the hunting down of the 60 men responsible, either those who judged him or were involved in the beheading itself, when his son, Charles II, reappeared. And it takes uh, it's really across the globe, you know, they're hunted down across America and uh, Europe and it's just been, a, it was a really fun project to do uh, and I've just been lucky that the book sort of did okay. You speak of the history with your family and with the book, Are, is there a, a room in your family home where you, you keep all of those from the 1500s? Like yeah, I found, you know, the, the thing about this house and this, uh, just living there, especially because history was my major and all that sort of thing. It's a living history lesson, you know, I, and I keep finding things. So one of the great 18th century portrait painters was Sir Joshua Reynolds, and I was in a, 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 a drawer a couple of years ago, and I found a handwritten receipt from him for one of the paintings in the collection, and it's just ridiculous, you know, living in this history. And I, and I was at Jordan's last night um, in, down the road, and it, what's amazing is how appealing this is to people of all backgrounds. I found it was a, it's not just people who love British things, it's people who love history in any form. They were packing in. We had hundreds of people. And I've been to Victoria before I'm going there tonight, as you say, and that'll be great. I mean, they obviously are very, uh, have wonderfully sort of traditional tastes, a lot of people there, but this is something that works in Canada. You know, I hear history, I hear family, and I'm sure many people asking you about, and I love that you're accessible on Twitter as well, and uh, you <laughs> tweeted this one out. Uh, with a unique family connection, uh, the new royal baby, my two-year-old Charlotte Diana, will be thrilled uh, at cousinly name sharing. What do you think about this? And, you know, I'm fascinated by your story about normality and how how you achieve that one with your family and then obviously you look at the Duke and, and Duchess of Cambridge of how they do the same with theirs. Well I don't know, I think my my father it was such a uh, a good influence in all our lives, my sisters and mine, um, in making us just appreciate everyone for who they were, and no airs and graces at all, you know, except it doesn't matter whether it's the Queen or a gardener, they're all human beings who have to be respected. And I think that's a wonderful basis to have your values uh, set upon. And I, I think you can see that through Diana and her children, and hopefully through mine. Um, we know how privileged we are and how lucky we are. I mean, I've been born to inherit all Thorpe and I mean how wonderful uh, but you've got to share it and uh, whether it's furniture or in fact I have a lot of events at all Thorpe hopefully to benefit the community I think it's about being part of the world and not retreating behind a, a sort of bastion of privilege you know it's a message certainly that your sister gave to the world and yes. you continue to give to the world the the every persons <laughs> princess the every persons ninth <laughs> earl spencer thank you for being here with us we appreciate it here's the event board if you would like to take part tonight 6 p.m jordan's furniture at 2269 douglas street in victoria absolutely thrilled to have you here oh, i enjoyed it so much Come thank back. you both very much thank if you've you. got a couple of rooms available next time we're in the <laughs> we, we can travel i'm, I'm feeling a live on location <laughs> yes. you can co-host it with us that'd it would be, be fantastic all right yeah. we'll, we'll put the pitch to producers <laughs>